I'm David Betts and I want to give you a quick whistle top tour of the Action Coach 5 Ways to Grow Cash Flow in Your Business. It's probably one of the most valuable strategies that you could ever use to increase the profitability within your business and so I invite you to take this on board. And the fundamental starting point is what we refer to as the business chassis and the analogy we use with this is the the underlying story between the VW Beetle, which was a huge success story it was from its production, to the evolution of the Porsche car based on the similar technology. And what it's saying is that the, the chassis technology can apply to different vehicles and exactly the same way the chassis that we're talking about here for the five ways process can apply to different businesses. So I invite you not to get too much into the detail go for the concept. The concept runs right through every business. What we want to do is give you the secrets of how it works and here's the key bit. If we take a business, typically what we'll have initially is we will get leads. We will get ways that we get inquiries into the business and from those leads we will convert a certain percentage of those into an order. And if actually we multiply those two together, we will get the number of customers. And each of those customers will buy from us a certain number of times. This is usually per year. So there will be a certain number of transactions that they will come back and they will buy again from us per year. And there will be an average value sale for each of those transactions. And if we multiply those together, we get the company turnover. And if we multiply that by the margin we make, we will be left with the profits. So here's the key thing to take note of. Most business owners will know how many customers they've got, what their turnover is, and what their profits are. But actually, all of those are functions of other things. The real core things you need to work on is how many leads do you get? What's the conversion rate? How many times do they buy from you? What's the average value sale? And what margin do you make? And we can look at those individually and we can work on them uniquely to grow their actual figures. So let's put some numbers in and see if we can make some sense of it, make it more real. Let's look at an example of a small business gets 4,000 leads per year and its conversion rate is 25% which means it gets a thousand customers per year. Each of those thousand customers buy on average two times a year and on average spends a hundred pound so multiply those together, gives us a turnover of £200,000. The margin is 25%, meaning the profitability is £50,000. A very nice little business. If you're running that business, excellent, well done. So, let's look at this from a strategy point of view. Within the Action 5-Way system, we have 75 different strategies on how to grow the, the number of leads you get into the business. Personally, I would suggest the key ones to me are things like multi-stream marketing, 10 by 10 as we call it. But there's also the interpretation of what actually is a lead. And the story I'll give you is a shopping precinct my colleagues was working with. And what it was, it's a typical scenario where you've got the storefront in here and the walkway comes through here. And people that noticed when they looked at it would walk down here as they were walking along and as you went into the shop there was a different floor covering so you'd have the display units in here and they would stop here this side of the, the, the floor change and they would look into the store but they wouldn't step over this line so we said well why is that and of course what we realized was the psychology of the situation is that the people walking down the main precinct here considered if they stepped into the shop, the store assistant came up to them and said, can I help you sir? What can I get you? Etc, etc. If they stood on the outside, they didn't feel that they could be accosted by the store, the store assistants. So what we came up with was an idea, and this idea was this, that we'd remove the differences between the floor coverings. And we got its permission to extend these floor coverings out into the walkway. The net result is if somebody's walking along here, 
they tended to walk straight across there because they didn't see that as part of the shop. And then the next thing they knew, they actually stood here looking in. But because there was no boundary, they would naturally wander into the shop. Net result, plus 15% throughput into the store, number of clients. 15% more potential people to sell to. How much would that be worth in your business? So, moving on. Conversion rate. Conversion rate is one of those things that in the hassle and the, the, the hubbub of business that we can easily park it and we can forget about it. But we have 84 strategies within the action system to help you change and improve the conversion rate. For me, the big thing is actually to have a system to keep track of your proposals and your quotations. Because it's the easiest thing in the world, you're under a lot of pressure, I must get the quote, I must get. you send the quote, done. You've ticked it in your box, you don't go back there, you just wait for the order to fall on your desk. So now, imagine, I'm a potential customer, I've got two quotes in front of me, this one from you, this one from another company, and this one phones me up and says, David, sent you the quote, was it okay, did I get it right, did I miss anything you wanted? Which one have I got the relationship with now? All other things being equal, who am I going to buy from? Answer, this one. So the biggest thing for me is to keep track of your quotes and proposals and to follow up, follow up, follow up. That will be the biggest one there. Number of transactions. There's a, was car salesman in North America and his name was Joe Girard. And Joe was the best selling car salesman in America for many years. And the reason he was the best selling car salesman was he'd realised that the average buying period for people buying a new car is two years. And the trouble is if somebody bought from him today, they wouldn't come near the garage for two years, especially the sales department of the garage for two years, to actually remember anything about him when they want the next car. So he realised the problem was that they were forgetting about him. They got no relationship. In two years' time, they had no tie and allegiance to going back to Joe to buy their next car. So I thought, how can I address this? And he thought about it, and he came up with a plan. He thought, if I can do something to keep in touch with those people every month for two years, they remember who I am. So, simple little plan. He got a, when he sold a car, he said, right, okay, what's your birthday? Your wife's birthday or her spouse's birthday? Wedding anniversary, he knew Easter, he knew Christmas, Thanksgiving, all these dates. The key was to come up with 12 different dates per year, 24 over two years. He would send them a card every month for 24 months at a cost to him of a dollar a card. Net result was average car salesman in America sells between seven and nine cars per month. Joe averaged between 20 and 25 cars per month for many years. And that's why he was the number one car salesman. So how much do you do to keep in touch with your customers? How much do you do to actually give you that edge and make you remember? Because when they came back to thought, right, we just we need to buy our next car, what they thought was, oh, we bought from Joe Gerard last time. We just go and tell Joe because it's polite. You know, he did a real good deal for us last time. He looked after us. We don't want to upset him, we just go and tell him. And of course, once they're in the showroom, all the new gadgets and gizmos on the new cars, Joe could sell to them. If they didn't come in the showroom, he couldn't sell to them. So, how do you keep in touch with your customers? What makes the difference? Now, the next one, average value sale. We have to give this one to McDonald's, don't we? Because if you go into McDonald's and you say, can I have a Big Mac, please? What do they say? Do you want fries with that? You say you want a meal, they say, would you like an apple pie? Everything has got an upsell. What are your upsells in your business? Statistic from a, a, a colleague I spoke to, used to work within the McDonald's franchise, 80% of people, when asked, would you like it large, say yes. How much does it cost for a few more chips and a bit more water in the coffee? What's your upsell? How do you grow your profit margin in your business? 53 strategies we've got there within average value sale. 
So then we come to margin. Margin's an interesting one. Because, let me tell you a story. One of my colleagues was working with a breakdown recovery company in the Midlands, and they'd been going through a hard time, and they realised that one of the lucrative contracts they could get would actually be to be working, doing contract work for the AA. Because if you've had the misfortune like I have to have an unreliable car, you know that when the AA come and collects you from all around the country, they don't actually usually collect you, it's usually a third party per company. And they said, well, you know, we tried to get in touch, but they just won't talk to us. So anyway, we went through and said, well, look, we need to look at this as a strategy. We need to look at how we're going to grow the business. So we said, well, when did you last increase the prices? And there's a lot of scratching of heads. And, oh, no, don't know. Uh, anyway, it was five years ago. Five years without a price increase. Cost of living got up and then price increase. That's a long time. So we need to increase the prices. One of our key strategies of the 67 that we actually have on margins. Um, oh, I don't know about that. If we increase our prices, we're going to lose all our customers. They go elsewhere. Will you really? What's the worst that's going to happen? Do you think they're just going to, you give such a bad service that they're just going to run away? Or do you think they're going to say, terribly sorry, but you know, you put your prices up, we can buy cheaper down the road? And I said, well, in all honesty, probably the latter. So I said, so if that's going to happen, you could discount your prices back down again, couldn't you, if that happened? Well, yes, I suppose you could do, actually, yeah. So, the final result was, agreed to increase their prices by 15%. Big marketing campaign, and the way that they were going to do it, big leaflet drop, 10,000 leaflets, and they did it a full advertising with all the, the pricing on the leaflet, ready to go out to all these prospects. They had a French student working within a marketing department, and he was taking notes, writing all down notes what we're going to do. And um, as a, a thing, I don't know if you're aware, but the French actually write their sevens and the ones differently. And um, what they do is they, they write ones a bit like we do a seven. So they have a big top one like that, and they do that. But they know that that looks a bit like a seven, so what they do is they make their seven like that differentiates it. So anyway, this French student wrote it down like this, plus 15% in his view. But that wasn't obviously how it got interpreted. They get back 10,000 leaflets plus 75% on the pricing. This is called an oops moment. They had a decision to make. They either scrapped 10,000 leaflets, spent the time having them reprinted and go back to square one, or they did something else and we went for the latter. And the something else was that we came up with a lot of things that could have been included in the package and gave some justification to the 75% price increase. So that's what we went for. We actually promoted their services 75% increase in price. The interesting thing was the reaction to people. Because the psychology here is that people aren't generally very good at judging quality and they very often judge quality against price. So if it's more expensive, it must be better. Ferrari must be better than the Ford because it's more expensive. That's the way most people work. So they send out this mail shot and everybody's holding their breath. The interesting thing is they get a phone call from the AA the next week saying, we're very interested in this new package you're offering. It's a little bit expensive, but we've always dismissed you as being a bit cheap and cheerful, but we really think you might be hitting the nail on the head here. So they took the invitation to go and have a chat with the AA they had to give them a discount, but they won the business. So, biggest fear is in the business owner's head, the fear of increasing prices. So you can increase the prices. So what, I hear you here, you say at this stage. So let me give you the, the, the follow on from this. So we've got all these strategies as to how we can grow these numbers. 
So we could tweak here and there. Is it worth the effort? I can hear you saying. Let's have a look. Now, when I coach with somebody, I'm generally looking to get an average of a 10% increase on each of these five ways. And um, so, if we want to grow the number of leads from 4,000 by 10%, it's going to be, how can we add 400 leads? Now, as I say, 10 by 10 marketing, the, the way that you present yourself with a shopping mall, all these are strategies. We've got the 73 strategies within our system that you could actually try. So the 4,000 could go to 4,400. Conversion rate. As I say, the biggest thing for me is follow up, follow up again. 25, to add 10% that, be another 2.5%, so that becomes 27.5%. Okay, so we've put a little bit on there. But these now multiply together to give us a number of customers, don't they? So we're going to add 10%. No, we're not, because it's compounded. 1,210. We've added 21% to that original figure. Is this getting more interesting? Number of transactions. Joe Gerard, birthday card scenario. 2 to 2.2. Average value sale, McDonald's, 100 to 110. We multiply these together. And this time we know we've got the compound effect, don't we? So we're not just going to be a measly 200,000, we're going to 292,000. Is this sounding interesting? Margin, 25%, 27.5%. Increasing prices is the biggest strategy that you can do. Multiply that together, gives us a profit profitability, £80,525. You've grown the turnover from 200,000 to 292,000. You've grown the profits from 50,000 to 80,525. In summary, as a 46% increase in turnover and a 61% increase in profitability. What would you do with your business if you grew the profitability by 61%? This is the five way strategy. If you're interested in working through this as an exercise, I do introductory workshops on them. Give me a call, we'll get you booked into the next one. I'm David Betts, working with Action Coach. I look forward to catching up with you soon. All the best in your business.